Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to emulate PlayStation 2 games on a Linux based machine and it's going to be using the PCSX2 emulator. Okay, so what you want to do is go to your browser and now from here if you just literally go to pcsx2.net I'll provide a link to everything that you will need and then on here go to download go to Linux and you can even download it but I recommend you go into the installation guide and so we're going to be adding the PPA which you know we can get manually but we don't want to do that there are a few great steps on the GitHub page and it's like there's a lot here and I'm just going to simplify what exactly you need all you need to do is go and get this one right here so this is if you're on 64-bit version it's just ensure that you can run 32-bit applications put your password in even if you don't see anything it is typing it and now you want to scroll down go to where it says add the PCSX to PPA to your software sources copy that paste that in and just click enter Okay, so now we just need to do sudo. So it's this command here. I'll just type it in because it's a pretty short command. apt get update. It might take a little bit longer for you, depending on how long it's been since you updated your system. And if this is the first time you're installing PCSX2, because for me it isn't, it's you know it's a lot quicker as you can naturally expect. Now we just need to run this line here. I wouldn't recommend the newer development version because you know it can be unstable, it's literally in the name. So just put sudo apt dash get install pcsx2. So what I'll actually do, not only will I provide you all the links that you need to download stuff, I'll actually provide you know these few commands that we've just run in the description so you can just go directly to them. But I'll provide this link as well if you want more information. And now that's it, it's all installed now. Because if we were to go to our applications, type in PCSX2, it's right there. Okay, so before we you know, do anything with that, we need to, don't want to be open up LibreOffice, we need to download the PS2 BIOS file. So if we literally just Google PS2 BIOS file, and go to ROMs Mania, Again, I'm gonna provide a link to this. Click downloads. If it doesn't start downloading, just click the click here button. I've already got it downloaded, so I'm not gonna re-download it. But just a little disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. This video is not condoning piracy, I'm not recommending piracy. And make sure you own the PlayStation 2 that you are using the BIOS file for, and you own the games that you've either ripped yourself or that you've downloaded, but you actually own the physical legit game as well. Again, just a little disclaimer. So now we can actually run it, but before we do that, I'm going to, we can close this down, don't need this open anymore. Go to, what in the download directory. I'll get rid of that. So in the BIOS, I'm just gonna extract this, so extract it here. Here we have all our BIOS files. We'll be adding them very soon. So open up the PCSX2, PCX2 and language selector system default you know english us you know both the same thing one for me and uh, overwrite that's just because i've already set it up before you probably won't get the option you can change it i recommend leaving them as default now we need a bios file so what you want to do is navigate to this directory here so it is i'll open up a new window it is home for han so I'm already here and it's .config pcsx2 and there's the BIOS folder. In here, this is where we want to add all of these files. So copy them, paste them here. And once that's done, we can close all of this down. Refresh list, we got the BIOS files right here. So select the version you want. I will be demonstrating this using the USA version click finish and now it's all set up now so if we were to go to cdvd 
ISO, select it, click browse. And now if I go to desktop or wherever your ISO file is, it could be on external hard drive. You could have a bunch of them. Select the file. So it's Tekken 4.ISO for me. Click open. And now go to system, C DVD 4. I'm going to turn the volume off a second. So double clicking it will maximize it as well. So in terms of how to navigate all of this, if you just go to config, controllers, plugin, and it looks a bit messed up here. It will not look like this for you. It's just because I've, you know, zoomed in on my screen so it's you know everything's bigger and easier for you to read except for like this one part but what you can basically do is select one of these sections so as you can see if you want to modify x you could click this one you know press x and you know it's already added there but you will add an extra command so the default x is k circle is l and you know start is n and select is V. So N, V, and K, that's really all I'm gonna need just to demonstrate what I wanna show you. And the arrow keys are, so E, D, F, and I. E, D, F, the left over here. Yeah, it's so they've sort of messed up the, the WAS, but again, you can connect up a controller, recommend doing that, or customize the controls to your liking. So if I click K, which is X, and then for the language, so I will go to, actually probably be easier if I go the other way. United Kingdom, yep, that is fine. Now that's all set up, that, you only have to do that once, fortunately. And now Tekken will actually load. So if I double click it, maximize everything. And I will just show you, you working. So if I go to arcade. Now, so do I will select Horang, click K. Don't worry, things will run very, very smoothly. It is just because I'm recording that it's not fully running at 60 frames per second. Plus, I can also change the settings. If I go back to resume, and I just pause it a second, I double click. So I'm just gonna move this over here. So what we can do is if we go to config, go to video plugin settings, we can change a bunch of stuff. So we could change it from OpenGL hardware to OpenGL software, if we want to. We can, so as you can see, that has immediately yielded a performance improvement. We're pretty much at the 60 frames per second now, or you know, it's a lot closer. And that there are a variety of other options as well. So let me pause that. If I go back to config video plugin, the variety of other options as well. You can add extra anti-aliasing. You can add, you know, mip mapping. You can add anisotropic filtering. So for you know when you get those obscure angles, if things don't look blurry, there's a bunch of other stuff you can do as well. Like there's so much stuff that you can do on a shader level. So feel free to you know mess around with this, find what works well on your system and also what looks the best as well for your system. So that's it. Obviously there's a lot more configuration that you can do, but this is a simple stuff, simple tutorial on how to actually just get things set up. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.